Check out Custom Aquarium Seamless Sump, and now check out the results of that sump. The 450 is looking absolutely amazing. Even though it did take a while for that bacterial bloom to clear, it has finally gotten over that hump. We also have some brown diatome algae growing, but that's totally normal in a new immature tank. But the sump is doing excellent. With that being said, we are going to do some modifications to the sump today. If you're new to sumps, this video is going to be very insightful for you. And if you're a veteran of sumps, you may want to consider checking out the Custom Aquarium Seamless Sump. You ready? Let's go. Now in case you missed that initial sump installation video, I'm going to put a card for you right here in the top right hand corner. But let's quickly go through it one more time. This first chamber is your sock chamber where the water drains into and then overflows from there into your baffle chamber. In the baffle chamber, water travels down, then up the baffle into the pump chamber. This chamber right here is where the two Vectra pumps are housed. The next chamber is your evap chamber and then finally your reservoir chamber. These two last chambers are getting filled by one of the pumps in the pump chamber that are connected to this T-valve and then we've got drip lines, one into this chamber, one into that chamber. As this chamber fills, it goes through the pipe, fills this chamber, as this chamber fills, it equalizes the pump chamber. Hope that all made sense. Now while this design works very well to increase your water volume, to eliminate the need to top off due to evaporation because it's topping off itself. The one upgrade I want to do to the sump is to increase the flow of water through all of the biomedia in all of the chambers. So it's a good thing that the seamless sump is customizable. Who would have thought that custom aquariums makes a customizable sump? So here's my thing. Even though I've got biomedia in every single chamber, it's really only this baffle chamber that's getting the maximum amount of water flow through the biomedia and then to the pumps that are right here and it goes back out to the tanks. Yes, the one pump is trickling into these other chambers right here, but that trickle is not a heavy flow of oxygenated water through the biomedia. So yeah, there is some beneficial bacteria growing in there, but it's not as efficient as I'd like it to be. Right now, the brunt of the beneficial bacteria is only in the media in this baffle chamber. I wanna utilize all the space in all these chambers and all this biomedia. Now, while the tank is cycled and the bloom has cleared up, it looks foggy now, it's just the camera, guys. The amount of biomedia in this one chamber is enough to handle the bioload of this stocking level, which is my two arowanas and, I don't know, nine or 10 discus. But obviously, I plan to load up this tank. So before I do that, I wanna make sure that all the biomedia I have in all these chambers are highly capable of growing beneficial bacteria. So here's what we're gonna do. But first, let me tell you what I've already tried, because I know some of you are gonna think this. Instead of having the pumps in this baffle chamber, kind of in the middle of the whole sump, I've already tried moving the pumps from here and I put them into this final chamber in order for the water to go from the sock, into the baffle, into the evap, and finally out the reservoir. And that will create water flow all the way through all the biomedia, out to the pumps, out to the tank. Here's the problem. This sump wasn't designed for water to travel horizontally across these one and a half inch pipes all the way to this last chamber. So what was happening was the pumps were sending the water to the tank and this chamber was draining really, really low because the pumps were pulling all the water out of it. And then this baffle chamber was filling up way too fast because the tank was obviously overflowing into the sock tub, into the baffle chamber. And before water can travel across back to the pumps, it was not traveling fast enough. So the baffle chamber was overflowing. So that didn't work. So I got on the horn with my man Mark from Custom Aquariums and we came up with a brilliant plan using some three quarter inch hose and this three quarter inch valve. So essentially the plan is instead of this T valve dripping water into each of these individual chambers, we're going to replace that T valve with this big old three quarter inch valve so that there is much more water entering this last reservoir chamber. And then that will cause the water to go that way into the evap chamber, then travel down into that pipe and then across into the pump chamber. So now, the pump chamber is gonna be filled from this side with the socks overflowing, 
and it's gonna be filled from this side going back this way. Okay, I'm breaking a sweat during the explanation. That's too much explaining. Let's get to work. Pumps off. Step one is gonna be removing this T-valve, including the water drip lines and the hose from the T-valve itself, which is going to require a little bit of muscle and a lot of bit of brains. And as you can see, I chose to go with muscle first because I didn't use my brain at all until I finally did. I got me a blowtorch. No, I'm just kidding. It's just a heat gun. Very efficient. It wants to be difficult. Got him. All it takes is the right angle. That's all she wrote. New valve works similarly. Pump return goes here. Another hose goes here, out to the tank. And this one here that is controlled by the valve goes into that last chamber. Hose is still nice and warm, so that slipped on nice and easy. Let's not forget our handy dandy clamp, which I tend to do sometimes. But this is just a little extra precaution, just in case. When it comes to a sump and all this free floating water, better to be safe than sorry. Is this hose still warm enough to go in here? Ah, kind of is. And then the clamp, same procedure, safety first. Nobody said aquarium work was easy. This stuff is tough. So we've got this handy dandy little thing that the hose goes into. No, I do not know what it's called. Came straight from custom aquariums. And then I went to Home Depot and bought this little three-way thing. No, I don't know what this thing is called, but it's in Home Depot. These are all three quarter inch size. This goes into here with our hose going into here. I'm not gonna struggle. I might as well heat it up. I've got my gun right here. Got in about halfway. Not good enough. I want it all the way in. Boom. That sucker's in all the way. And this just connects here so that water spits out and kind of separates into the chamber, creating a nice flow in the chamber. Either way, the purpose is just to fill it up so that it overflows out of the pipe and then goes across to the next chamber. Now, can this pop out of here? Mm, possibly. Actually, I'm gonna say yes. No problem, we've got glue. Same old PVC cement that we use when we installed the sump. There it is. Let it set for a little while, that cement will hold. No time. Let's see if this fits into my hole. Eh, nope. Valiant effort. So, into the sump we go. Find the exit hole. Come on, Kev, find the hole. Find the hole, Kev, come on. You can do it. There we are. All right. All right. We're gonna connect to the valve. Let's get our handy dandy and warm this sucker up. If you're gonna mess with these hoses, you have to get a, a heat gun or a torch or something to heat these hoses up because they need to be forced onto these adapters, which is a good thing, which means they're gonna be nice and secure. You don't have to worry about leaks or anything like that. All right, go ski. Ooh, baby. That went in nice and smooth. Look at that. In there, baby. One, two, three. Clamp time for security purposes. All right, go now. Let's get this hose installed into our pump. No, you guys can't see this because I cannot get that camera down here. But here is my Vectra pump. I got, this is one of the two that are in this chamber. If you want to check it out, link will be in the description. Okay guys, I know you're looking at this plumbing work and you guys are probably like, what the heck is Kev doing? In my defense, I have to say, I am not a plumber, guys. I am a fish keeper, which is one of the reasons I've always been a little intimidated by sumps because I know there's a lot of plumbing type of work involved in this stuff. So I'm not here to make the plumbing work look pretty. That's not my main goal. My main goal is to make sure the sump is working as efficient as possible. And right now we're about to test it and see if it is.
This is the exciting part. When the work is done and the tank lights just turned off on me. Did you see that? Let me reset them. Look how beautiful it looks though. With just the room lights. I like it. Both pumps are on. And they are both pumping full blast. If you look at the surface agitation up there. If Flaco gets out the way. There's the surface agitation for that output. And there's the surface agitation. Excuse me guys. For that output right there. So they are both on full blast. Because I have not open that valve yet sending water to that back chamber let's do that right now valve is open water is going through there i'm going to open it up all the way max looks like the whole entire hose is full of water and we're filling that chamber up now output still looks good over there still looks nice and strong and now we're sending water to this back chamber keep an eye on this um, this chamber making sure this doesn't overflow Making sure this doesn't overflow, that doesn't overflow. We can't have no overflowing in anywhere. So it's definitely pumping water into there, even though it doesn't look like it. But I'm gonna try to get you guys a little view right here. See if you can see this. Can't get it all the way out, but listen to that. That's the water coming from the pump through the valve, through the hose, and now coming out and filling out this last chamber, which essentially, so what does all this mean? Let's recap real quick. Now that we got a heavy flow of water into that chamber, what's happening is all the media that's sitting at the bottom of this chamber, as water comes into this chamber at the bottom, it needs to travel its way up to reach the pipe. So that upward travel is water going through that media. Then it goes across the pipe and into this chamber here. And in this chamber here, We've got another bunch of media inside of here, but now water is traveling down and through all the media that's in this chamber, which then goes across here and finally back into the pump chamber. So now all of the media that are in every single one of these chambers is getting water actually physically being pushed and forced through the media versus before where the media was just kind of sitting under water and that's it, it was just submerged. Yeah, you're gonna grow some beneficial bacteria, but not as much as you can like this. Now granted, I'm not saying that this is gonna grow like umpteenth amounts of bacteria. That's not how it works, guys. We might all know that by now. You still can only grow as much beneficial bacteria as your bio load calls for, right? But again, like I mentioned earlier, when I do end up stocking this tank fully with all the fish I do want in here, I'm gonna need all the beneficial bacteria I could get. So I don't want to have any problems with not having enough media with beneficial bacteria on it, especially since I got all this room. Now I will have the capability to grow all the bacteria that I need to make sure this tank stays copacetic. So all looks well right now. This water level here does not go above my little tape right there that I got. A little cautionary tape to make sure that everything is not gonna overflow. So that's good. The pump chamber is staying at a nice decent level, even though both pumps are at 100% uh, maximum wattage capability, which is what I want, because that's gonna create more turnover in the tank. And then these last two chambers are staying at a nice decent level, but now the water is being forced back through here, which is exactly what I wanted. Again, this is one of the perks of having a seamless sump like this, that you can do all these kind of modifications move pumps around to different chambers, do whatever you like, whatever fits your particular needs. At this point, you may be asking what type of biomedia I'm using in the sump or what type I would recommend. That's gonna be that video right there for you. Make sure you go check it out. But if you like this kind of video, let me know by hitting the thumbs up button and subscribing, and I will see you on the other side. Peace.